Boone and Crockett Country, presented by Leupold. Of all things in the natural world, the relationship between predator and prey is arguably the most fascinating. Animals hunting, killing, and feeding on other animals is critical to the natural order, so much so that the hunted would not have survived evolution without the hunter, and vice versa. Was the impala born fast, or did he evolve to become fast because he lived with the cheetah? Or did the cheetah evolve to be the fastest of the cats because his food was fast? What makes the predator-prey relationship so fascinating? The answer is simple. Our interest lies in the fact that man himself is a predator. Make no mistake, the alpha predator today and throughout recorded history is man. We sit atop the food chain with the ability, like no other, to manipulate nature and grow and harvest natural resources to suit our needs. With this role comes great responsibility. When it became apparent we had taken too much from the land and its wildlife without giving back, we created a conservationist society and a wildlife management system focused on renewable resources. Ironically, the driver behind this conservationist movement has been the most active predator among us, sportsmen. Today, the predator-prey relationship that is recreational hunting is less about the need to hunt for food and clothing and more in step with man's need to remain connected to the land and its wildlife. History has shown that when man is engaged and interested, lands are protected and wildlife thrives. In the West in particular, the symbol of this engagement is the elk. Elk are the single most important big game species across the West, aesthetically, economically, and traditionally. The presence of elk in good numbers is therefore a sign of habitat health and successful conservation. It is also a matter of pride, especially to sportsmen. As such, elk hunting is big medicine in the West for individuals, families, communities, and states. This past season, one Montana resident participated in the annual predator-prey relationship known out west as elk camp. In doing so, he also witnessed the effects of unbalanced natural predation and raised questions about another pending predator disaster. Keith Balford has the good fortune of living in the hunting and fishing capital of the west and working for the oldest hunter conservationist organization in North America. Balford is the Director of Marketing for the Boone and Crockett Club, with its national headquarters based in Missoula, Montana. The area his elk and mule deer tag were valid for, and the ranch he gained access to is special, special in many ways. Like most ranches in Montana, it has elk. This in itself is not surprising, since the population of elk in the big sky is second only to that of Colorado. What is special is that this particular pocket of land is overrun with bulls, but this is only a recent residency. As we will learn, an interesting predator-prey relationship has developed here due to this influx of elk, which are also now in the path of a new predator on the landscape. I was told by the rancher before this hunt that 25 years ago, just, just seeing a branch at or bull on this place was worth a phone call to the neighbors. Now it's literally overrun with bulls. I also learned that this used to be one place in Montana where a guy would have a chance of seeing a mule deer pushing 200 inches. I didn't know what to expect for the deer hunting, but the elk hunting sounded just too good to be true. Something happened to flip this particular ecosystem, sending the elk rolling in by the hundreds and the mule deer packing. Today, the mule deer on this ranch are hanging on by a thread, and in their place is an elk hunter's nirvana. Boone and Crockett Country is in partnership with the Wild Sheep Foundation, putting and keeping sheep on the mountain. Remington, arms and ammunition, welcome to Remington Country. And the Dallas Safari Club, 
promoting conservation and ethical hunting worldwide. It is relatively easy to predict where elk can be found today. They prefer areas with ample summer grazing and winter forage, available surface water, and open, higher elevation meadows adjacent to timber. They also seek areas with low predator pressure, natural and human. Cowboys working cattle are tolerated, but excessive vehicle traffic, like what can be seen in heavily roaded areas during their hunting season, is not. As for natural predators, Mountain lions do have an effect on elk distribution, but not nearly as much as wolves. The ranch Balford was hunting is nearly 100,000 continuous acres under single family ownership, surrounded by a mix of public and private lands. It includes all the habitat elements elk need, plus one, low predator pressure. Seasons of hunting pressure on nearby public lands have sent elk pouring onto this ranch, which today does not have a wolf population. Like many cattle ranches in the West, hunting provides a vital boost in income to the up and down world of beef prices. Having friends rave about the abundance of elk here, six by six bulls in particular, Balfour arrived for this hunt well schooled on what to expect. I had several friends who had hunted this ranch before tell me, uh, and all their advice was the same, hunt hard for three days for a 350 class bull. Bigger bulls do exist, uh, they're easier seen than taken, uh, but by the fourth and fifth day you should have no problem finding a good mature six by six bull. They also told me, uh, don't be surprised if you eat your deer tag. What Balford experienced on his first morning was nothing short of amazing. Numerous six by six bulls were located before noon with the best bull pushing 340. As for mule deer, one immature buck was seen tending a few does. As time goes on, all of a sudden you look around and you see a whole pile of elk and, and all of a sudden no mule deer. What has happened up here on this ranch has taken place over uh, quite a number of years. The uh, elk have increased just from protection from the standpoint of private land, also from the standpoint of hunting seasons and the season structure to allow them to increase in numbers and at the same time as they have increased they've been a, a competition for the mule deer in the area by the end of the second day balford and his guide josh bryson were playing out their pre-hunt advice by the first morning i'd never seen anything like it i mean there was literally mature six by six bulls everywhere we looked the quality of the habitat was unbelievable. It was certainly the best elk country I'd ever been in. And it looked like great mule deer country as well, but the, the deer were just few and far between. Competition from elk for nutrition can have a negative impact on mule deer. With a top-heavy elk population moving in, mule deer can get pressed from the better foraging habitats. But this alone would not account for the decrease in the mule deer herd, and more specifically, the loss of older age class bucks. There were an outstanding amount of mule deer up here. Along with that, keep in mind, there's also predators that also grew up with those mule deer populations, specifically mountain lions. Uh, coyotes maybe to some extent, but mountain lions would be the big predator that would, would have an impact on mule deer populations. As the mule deer populations were high, so were the mountain lion populations. So now what we have is a situation where elk have, have pretty much taken over the rangeland have outcompeted the mule deer for forage, but yet we're still dealing with a fairly top-heavy amount of mountain lions in the area that continue to have an impact on the remaining mule deer that are left. To manage mountain lion populations in Montana, hunting is used on a limited quota basis. Once the quota for a given unit is filled, the season is closed. In this particular unit, the quota has been five lions, including one female. 
it is likely that the mule deer in this press situation will not recover until more cats are taken, and that means increasing the quota. Boone and Crockett Country is in partnership with Buck Knives, knives that fit your life, and the Pope and Young Club for the good of bow hunting. Even on private land, where the game sees limited human pressure, mature bulls have lived long enough to learn how to avoid being the hunted. In three days hunting, we did manage to uh, locate two bulls that were legit 370 bulls in different locations, but, but seeing them was one thing, getting on them was another. In both cases, these bulls set up shop in either the steepest or the thickest part of the ranch that we learned the hard way were selected with great care. Josh, it's looking like these bulls have pretty much parked it in those trees. I think so. I think they're going to take a nap and I think we can work our way over there. There's nine good bulls there and I think we can get in position to maybe get a shot if they feed out the same place this afternoon. Just slide up around that knob and come down that timbered side across from them. I think so. We'll tuck ourselves back in the timber and work up on a little perch so we can get a good vantage point and see what happens. I don't know. We've been here for an hour and a half and they've they pretty much have all disappeared into the trees and nothing's popping out the other side, so that's got to be their bedroom. That's right. We should probably get headed that way. Right on. Let's do it. Both of these bigger bulls picked daytime bedding areas where the wind currents were always in flux, and both bulls surrounded themselves with smaller bulls as sentinels. Even with the ability to reach out with a rifle, either eyes or noses were busting us every time. It was frustrating but exhilarating at the same time. Ask any Montana elk hunter what they hope to see the most during elk season, and the answer may surprise you. Not elk, but snow. A healthy November snowstorm can be the great leveler. After three and a half days, we had had our share of trying to close the deal on a 350 class bull, but by, by day four, it was time to press. We had sat on one of the 370 bulls the evening before, hoping he would leak out across an open meadow for a shot. That's a great bull. Body size alone, he dwarfs those other bulls. He never did. What we did get was an incoming snowstorm. While we were laying there on this bull, just spotted a herd of six bulls across a mile wide sage flat. With fresh snow falling, just made the call that we were going to go after these bulls in the morning. Oh, well, just it started snow when we sat on those bulls last night. And from the looks of it, it didn't stop all night. It didn't. We're in here six, eight inches of snow, and uh, it's pretty quiet. Um, glad to make it up on the mountain this morning. <laughs> Chained up to get here. Well, maybe this will change our luck. This hopefully, night. hopefully we got a good wind, favorable wind. Uh, hopefully, the bulls are in the same meadow. Right on. We'll take our chances. Cool. Let's go. The snowstorm was a good lesson for me. With mild weather and no snow, the bulls were on their toes all week. You didn't expose yourself even as far off as 700 yards or a bull would peg you and slip into the timber. As it usually happens when it came down to pulling the trigger, it all happened in an instant. This bull just stepped out of the timber and it was now or never. Like a good head. Yeah. That looked like a good head. Yeah, he's gonna be. Good job. Sweet. Sweet. Perfect broadside shot. Had to go all up here. Sticks, sticks were not no. not gonna happen. Too much action in there. Fantastic. Good job. Thanks man. That was a battle. It's a battle. We earned him. Yeah, we did. We earned him. Should be right up in here. <laughs> Look at that, baby. Nice pull, cool. all right. Tines in the snow. All right. 
Pretty bull. Pretty bull. Congratulations. Pretty bull. Great dagger, huh? Yep. The third. Pretty bull. Yes, you're prototypical. Yep. Not busted up. Seen quite a few busted up bulls this week. Yeah, yeah. Plenty of bulls in this area and they get after it. They right? get after it, no doubt. No doubt. Well, Josh, post rut bulls can be tough, but we sure put the move on him today. I mean, this is this is a great bull. I'm just pleased to death with him. We saw bigger bulls, but they really parked themselves in, in sanctuaries that were just unapproachable. I mean, how, how many, I mean, this is day five, our last day, our last morning, and every day we were trying to drill into those. We were, we just those couldn't. deep holes, and <clears throat> they're just set up for the wind just perfect. I mean, you just could not yeah. get on them. You'd see them from one canyon to the other and go across on them. And, uh, but we knew if we just keep grinding it out, we'd get lucky. And we got lucky this morning. We did. We did. We walked right into them. It's perfect conditions for walking. We're in all this dry weather up till today. No, this is this is a sweet, sweet ending to a great hunt, and we hunted. That's uh, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to hunt. I just didn't want to come, come out here and shoot a bull, which you can do. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to hunt for them, and we did. We did some shopping around. Yeah, I mean, this is a great area. Once in a while, some kind of deal. Yep, it's a Fortunate to be tough tag to get. Made the most of it. Made a hunt out of it, which was important to me. Fair chase all the way, mm -hmm. uh, which was really important to me. And uh, he's going to look good on the wall. My, my, my girls love elk meat. Well, there you go. So you they're, they're going to be ecstatic. <laughs> Just being on a ranch like this and being around this many elk is what I'll remember the most. Clearly, the wolves haven't found this place yet, and I worry about what's going to happen when they do. Boone and Crockett Country has been brought to you by Leupold, America's Optics Authority, and the Boone and Crockett Club, fair chase and conservation since 1887. The predator-prey relationship has been in play for thousands of years and will continue. Just as all predators instinctively know the limit of their resources, man as the alpha predator has assumed his role as the guardian over the Earth's natural resources. As a society, we do not like seeing one particular species succumb to excessive natural or human-induced predation. In this particular area of Montana, human pressure on surrounding public lands has pushed elk herds onto less active private lands. In turn, this displaced the mule deer to less favorable habitat, making them more susceptible to mountain lions. It is likely that the quota for mountain lion as a managed big game species will increase in those areas where mule deer numbers are dropping. The real question in the West now is reintroduced wolves and how much big game do we allocate to them? Another predator on the landscape, one that is currently bouncing back and forth under federal protection, is shuffling the deck for game managers and sportsmen. That at some point in time, with the mobility of wolves, the dynamic of their populations, and the amount of wolves that we have around in Montana, there will be wolves that will eventually come into this population of elk. We have wolves with a combination of bears and then on the edges a combination of mountain lions and especially with, with wolves not being controlled, it's going to have a negative impact on uh, the ungulate populations in this area. Habitat is a key thing that's going to take all the animals into the future, prey species, uh, predators and also the human hunting populations. If we don't take care of the, the habitat needs of all these animals, then we're going to lose it all. The science of wildlife management is time tested. When the landscape changes, 
state-run wildlife management has the knowledge to make the necessary adjustments and predator-prey outcomes fall back into balance. It is when state management is prohibited from applying science that this balance is threatened, which is neither good for the hunter or the hunted, be it elk, wolves, cougar, mule deer, or man. Closed captioning provided by the Dallas Safari Club, promoting conservation and ethical hunting worldwide.